how's it going guys? Joe here with PetroleumServiceCompany.com and today we're going to be discussing rust and oxidation oils. Uh, if you've ever been on our website, we have them broken down by mineral based. We have RNO and circulating, food grade, turbine, synthetic. Um, huge family. Huge family and today we fortunately have resident guru Jim Lewis here to break down these categories and really explain a little bit of why we have it broken out that way. So thanks, Jim. Well, and, and it is, it's tough with the rust and oxidation oils. Um, of course, in their name, rust and oxidation oils, that is their purpose, you know, right. to stop metal surfaces from rusting and keep the oil and the parts from oxidizing and breaking down, you know. So they cover such a wide variety of applications, uh, industrial plants at home, you know, everywhere, you know, and also the, the, they're the foundation for every other lubricants we get from them, you know whether it be gear oils, hydraulic oils, but it's just the term rust and oxidation oils just seems so general that people have a hard time distinguishing what is the proper product for their application. Mm -hmm. You know, because also another thing with that is a lot of the OEMs refer to it all different ways themselves, you exactly. know? Right, they might be calling for a machine oil, they might be calling for, like you said, a, a non-detergent oil, you know? C circulating a oil. A circulating oil, you know, they what give all that? these names to it for essentially all the same product today. Yeah, I mean, one thing is the mineral versus synthetic. Right. Oh, absolutely. And that's a, you know, that's definitely base oil quality, you know, and that's absolutely. the, you know, synthetics, of course, mineral comes from the ground, you know, that's, yeah. that's our crude oil. We refine it and we come up with our mineral based, you know, and, and, and then you have several different levels of mineral oil. And uh, I'll kind of touch on that a little bit later, how we can go to product data sheets and kind of look at the quality of that mineral oil or that base oil to determine whether you have the right product for your application. With all this, it's the OEM, the original equipment manufacturers, that dictates what should be used in their application. You yeah. know, so we rely on whoever that equipment manufacturer say what they want. The problem is, when you open up that manual, it says what they want. That can be hieroglyphics to a lot of people. Absolutely, they, yeah. They yeah. don't understand what that means, and that's what we try to break down. And, and some of the key things to understand first is viscosity. Viscosity uh, with rust and oxidation oils that's key because they don't have a lot of additives. So in, in, in an industrial application, you take a simple bearing type application. Um, that bearing is at the same temperature all day long. It's rotating at the same speed all day long. It has the same load on it all day long. Not so many variables. No variables, right. So that's why we have so many different viscosity grades because the OEMs can nail down exactly the thickness of that oil they want between the two mating surfaces based on those conditions. Right. You know, and it's kind of, the way we kind of relate it, if you think about a car driving through water, you know, okay. you're driving real, real okay. slow through a puddle of water and your right. wheels contact the ground, you can steer, you can drive, no problem. And that's, you know, that's good. That's not good in a bearing. You know, it's good because yeah. good you have good grasp on the road with a, a tire and a wheel, but it's not necessarily good for a bearing when it's dragging across its other surface. That's now, true. you speed that car up where the water starts getting in between the wheel and the road surface, we get the hydroplaning. Hydro, yeah, that little exactly. space. Exactly, not good in a car. Not good in a car. Fantastic in a bearing application. And that's where they want to be. That's what they're trying to achieve is that hydrodynamic lubrication. Rust and oxidation oils, they get the right thickness between the two mating surfaces. The oil will actually separate the two mating surfaces where they're not touching each other. And that's what they call hydrodynamic lubrication. That's the ultimate. And that's what the OEMs are trying to achieve with that piece of equipment. It can't always be dumb, but that's what right. the, ultimately what they're trying to achieve. Adversely to that, if you go too thick, it's kind of like driving that car into a into the mud. You and know, it's like too much thickness. It's too thick, you can't drive it. through it. Right, you're you're losing production. You're actually creating heat within that bearing surface. The two surfaces because it's having a harder time trying to work that bearing yeah. surface through it. Yeah. So that's kind of viscosity is key, and that's yeah. that's the kind of thing to understand first. Uh, the second thing would be base oil quality. Um, you know, these rust and oxidation oils. Three in one oil that you might have seen around your house, your dad's had the same bottle around for yeah. 20 years. You know, you put it on the door latches around your house. Yeah. That's a rust and oxidation oil. You know, it, it doesn't have any additives. It's just doing the purpose of lubricating that hinge on the door so it doesn't squeak, it doesn't rust on you, things like that. Absolutely. That's a rust and oxidation oil. So it covers a wide range of different ap applications. It can be uh, moderately loaded gearboxes, hydraulic systems that aren't high pressure. Um, especially your bearing lubricants, you know, right. and it really, we're just going from there and we're just saying, okay, looking at the particular application and saying, okay, will it last? Will it survive in this application? If I use a mineral base that's only a 4,000 hour uh, type uh, fluid, will it be able to perform and last in that type of application? And that's what you got to take on a case by case basis. You might have heating issues that you can't, are out of your control, you know. Right, yeah. Mineral-based products will cook at 165 degrees. That's when they'll start to break down. So that's a definite indicator of if you're operating a, a bearing surface that's going over 165, 
you got to jump over. Yeah, you got to right. step so it up. Right, the... exactly. So you'll get a lot of gearboxes and stuff like that that'll run at, at you know, higher temperatures, especially if it's not a reservoir that circulates, and that's where you get the circulating system, circulating oils. You know, it's basically a reservoir that pumps it out to a bearing or a gear, and then it comes back, and it circulates around similar to our cars. Okay. That's what they're referring to when they say circulating systems, and these are those type of rust and oxidation are used in the circulate pulls that heat away, comes back. But you might have an application that doesn't circulate, can't remove that heat. Once again, you gotta up the oxidation stability. Right. Um, there's an ASTM test that they actually do, it's called TOST. And you can find it on any one of the product data sheets. Okay. And this is where they actually put it through an accelerated uh, temperature type operation and it gets it to break down and they base it on hours. So you can actually go onto the product data sheets and look up its TOST test numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, and it'll be like 4,000 hours, 5,000 hours. It's all based on hours of performance within that test criteria. And it's important that the customers know every one of our products, they can go down on that product, individual product page and pull up the product data sheet. And right there, they, you know, it's a great reference tool to really nail down exactly what you're buying and also as a comparison tool to yeah. look at other products that you're buying, you know, side by side. Right there, yeah. it's going to, you know, under these rust and oxidation you're going to be able to see what is this TOS test versus the other brand's TOS yeah. test, you know, and, and really evaluate from there which one has a better VI, which one has a colder pour point in the wintertime, you know, which one flows better, you know, things like that. But product data sheets uh, are on every one of our individual product pages. You can reference them at any time. Print them off, download them, you have them all there right in front of you, and uh, it's also going to show your specifications that it meets, right. if it meets any uh, of the OEM requirements, you know, things like that, that they might have particular specifications that it needs to meet. Yeah. It's going to be right there on the product dash. This is by far the, the largest group of products we have. And when you look at the viscosity grades, you know, when you look at an automotive application, we have three or four different viscosity grades of automotive yeah. products that we sell versus rust and oxidation oils, we have minimal 15 different viscosity yeah. grades. You know, so you take the, all the different viscosity grades, the quality levels of base oil that are used in them, and it just becomes a tremendous, immense line. You Absolutely, know? yeah, and then you, you know, just to know the viscosities from 32 up to what have you, 1,000. Right. And then there are people like Mobile who will have, they'll call their DTE series light Whoa, to extra yeah, well then you get into the names, you, right? Then the whole name, you need us for that. We, we gotta help you guys decide on the names. And uh, you know, yeah, there's just all these complications. So when you look at the categories initially, it's kind of overwhelming, hey, this is, but it's because they are very all encompassing, your general yep. type yep. of a lubricant yep. that all the other types of oils start start from. Right, right. so even though, right, even though all these rust and oxidation oils, their additive levels, very similar, you know what I mean? Yeah. They just don't have a ton of additives because the additives will adversely affect whatever the application you're using. Yeah. And, you know, the, the base oil is what's being relied on to do its job, you know, and that's that's really, and that's where you get the higher quality base oils, you know, and that's why, you know, turbine quality, you know, and it, this is, you know, this is the same oil that's used in jet turbines on jet engines, you know what I mean? Right. Turbine yeah. oil, you know, it's a rust and oxidation oil. It's minimal additives, they don't want the additives, uh, but they need a high performance lubricating oil that has a great, Toss test. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like great performing toss <laughs> test. Indeed. Um, but yeah, but uh, no, it's it's a, an extensive line, but hopefully we try to break this out and we break it out. You know, first and foremost, the things to understand. First and foremost is understanding your viscosity yeah. and knowing your viscosity. And generally we rely on our OEMs to tell us the viscosity. Uh, then looking at the application itself, you know, what are the temperature requirements, you know, how often you yeah. got to change it out, you know, things yeah. like that. Are you going to be inside, outside, uh, exactly, temperature change? Exactly, right, temperature changes, anything like that, and that's going to help us determine exactly the base oil quality we need for it. And then how often, honestly, how often you change it? You yeah. know what I mean? If, if, it's, if it's a leak or it leaks, you don't need to spend a bunch of money on a very expensive product versus one that it might be in a remote area somewhere that you want to leave in there for a long time and you want to get the best life out of it you can before it breaks down then you look at a higher quality type base oil. But bottom line, uh, these are the foundation products. From here is where we build out, you know, EP gear lubricants, extreme pressure gear lubricants, or we might add zinc and make it, you know, extreme pressure hydraulic systems and all that. But this is the foundation block of lubricants that you use in an industrial plant. And they're still the widely, most widely used products in the plant. All right. So, I mean, as you can see, there's a lot that go into rust and oxidation oils, and that's a, kind of why we have them falling into so many different categories. I mean, a lot of products, they have a lot of different applications. So you need to find out what's right for you, and we're trying to provide that. But if you do have any questions, feel free to give us a call, uh, chat with us online, or visit us at petroleumservicecompany.com. We'll be more than willing to help, and thanks a lot, Jim. Yeah, no problem. Take care, guys.